Hi friends, today we are going to discuss about assessment of uncooperative psychiatry patients. I am Dr. Suresh Padadmat, Professor of Psychiatry, Head of Telemedicine Center, Head of Forensic Psychiatry Unit at Nimans, Bangalore. Let's understand how to examine an uncooperative patient and also why should we examine uncooperative patients? They don't want to get examined. Please do understand, uncooperative patient is a challenge for any physician, doctor or even a junior resident and also to any mental health professionals because uncooperative patient can be a sign of severe mental disorder. So we have to treat them. To treat them, we have to observe them. We have to understand them. So the patient may be uncooperative for many reasons. The reasons can be the uncooperativeness is because of altered sensorium, maybe withdrawal of alcohol, disorder, stuporous, he may be part of a catatonia, the person may be mutism, maybe selective mutism, or else because of various reasons he is unresponsive, an agitated patient, violent, aggressive, restless patient, or severely depressed patients, or even a very suspicious patient. So various reasons are there to become uncooperative. Just because a patient is uncooperative, you cannot say that they are refusing to give consent. We have to make an attempt to understand them and make an observation and do an assessment. In this regard, this video is going to help you to do how to do an examination. Further, a traditional mental status examination or a cognitive function is not going to yield you much information. Hence, we have to use Kirby's Proforma. This Kirby Proforma is being developed for examination of uncooperative psychiatric patients. So, before we start, how to approach an uncooperative patient? Many a time, our students or a young trainee or else a early psychiatrist may want to help all patients. But at the same time, you should know there are certain policies need to understand. First and the foremost, prevention is the best policy for any aggression or else even a violence. So, to do the prevention, you have to assess the risk. How to assess the risk? Collect information from all possible sources regarding the patient. Talk to the family members, friends, relatives, if a nurse has watched them or a bystander who has brought the patient. Ward attenders, please do go through the medical records of the patient. By going through, you will get a fair amount of understanding about the patient illness and also patient's general condition and also medical condition. By doing this, by doing this, you are going to get a fair amount of patient's problem. With this, look at the past treatment details. Is there any side effect? Was there a similar incident where patient was had a relapse and also had become uncooperative at that time? What was the strategy adopted at that time? Is there any history of violence? Does he carrying any weapon or does he have a weapon when he was brought in? Ensure there is a security personnel around you when you go and meet this uncooperative patient. Although the uncooperative patient most of the time are stuporous or catatonic, that doesn't mean that they can also become violent suddenly in catatonia. So hence, you have to see that there is a security and safety around you. At the same time, before you approach the patient, observe the patient for some time from a far distance. Maybe through CCTV. Nowadays, many ward do have close, closed observing, uh, like what we call it as CCT, that is closed circuit television monitoring. So those kind of circuits, if we have, please monitor the patient for some time. And then when you enter the ward, be near to the exit door, that is near the door. And also be calm and cool. Don't be anxious. Don't be threatening. And your body language should be as mild as possible. If your body language is very threatening, the patient also becomes violent sometime. Do not challenge the patient belief at this point of time when you approach the patient. Considering all these things, you have to go to the ward very calm, cool, as if as you are observing the patient as normal as possible. So now we enter into the how do we do the examination using Kirby's Proforma. Basically, Dr. George H. Kirby in 1921, this Proforma was introduced. This Proforma has eight different components. 
The first and the foremost is general reaction and posture, facial expression, eyes and pupil, reaction to what is said and done, muscular reaction, emotional responsiveness, speech and writing. So these are the eight different components have been there in the Kirby's Performa. Now let's go one by one in these eight components. First and the foremost, general reaction and posture. As you go and see the patient, observe him. Is there any spontaneous acts such as any occasional show of activities or assaultiveness or being withdrawn, crying? Is the patient tidy, clean, hygienic, whether his clothes, how is his clothes, whether the hairs are matted, whether he has combed his hair very well, is there any scars on his body, how is his general build, is the patient takes food on his own, requires assistance for his food intake, does he require help for dressing himself, how is his dress, does his dress is very well mannered or it's in a very exuberant manner like seen in many a patient, does the action shows whenever he makes movements whether it is slowness or he is very fast, he is very restless. So these are the things you have to observe and make a note. At the same time, what is the behavior of the patient towards the examiner, towards the, towards the doctor, towards the nurse, towards the ward attendant? Was there any problem before and at this point of time? What is his volunteer posture as he sees the examiner or the doctor? Whether he is in a comfortable, neutral position or he is in an awkward, constrained position. Many a time, catatonia patients may stand hours together on one leg. We don't know why, but in catatonia patients do have this. Many a time, they also found in an uncomfortable position, standing or sitting or maybe sleeping. So, these uncomfortable pos uh, position, if they are doing this for a long time, please do make a note of that. What do, what is like, suppose at the same time, if the patient is not violent, you can approach to the patient, do introduction of yourself and also say, what is the reason you have come and what is the goal of your uh, purpose of visit? Once you do that, try to tell the patient, I'm going to put the body or the hands or any part of the body in an uncomfortable position. And if he does not like it, he can put it back to normal position, like lifting his hand and keeping above his head. If he finds it very difficult for a long time, he will go back to the normal position. But in case of catatonia, they will maintain posture for longer duration. If those kinds of maintaining posture is there, please do make a note of it. Look at the behavior. Is the behavior is same the whole day? Or else, is the behavior changing? Does it fluctuate in a day? And also, how is his behavior when his family members are there? or else his relatives and friends. Many a time certain patients becomes violent in the presence of certain family members or else they become withdrawn in, pre in the presence of others. For example, if there is an abuser or a domestic violence is there, in the presence of the abuser, the victim becomes very silent. So look at the changes in the attitude in the presence of any family members or others. Moving to the second component, that is facial expression. How is his facial expression? Is the expression is being alert or he is aware? Is he smiling? Does he smile very often without any reason? Smiling to self is there? Is there a mask like face? Dead pan appearance or a placid sulky face? Anxious? Does he look perplexed? Distressed? Tearful? Please do make a note of this. If the person has a blank dead pan face, means it appears to be extra perimental symptom. So that time also the patient looks having posture will be seen, rigidity will be seen. So please do see that. Is the facial pressure is constant? Does it change very often? Especially in mania, the patient will be seen very often crying or very often they will be very happy. So there will be rapid change in the uh, mood symptoms. Or that is this any symptom seen only occasionally? So, this facial expression should be noted. Moving to the third point, eyes and pupils. Are the eyes open or closed? If the eyes are closed, whether he resists whenever you try to open his eyes, 
request him to open his eyes. If he doesn't request, try to open his eyes and he does he resist for that. Does he give attention to the examiner? Does he look at you? Doesn't whether he just ignores you and try to see whether he follows the object. You ask him to follow the object of the ball pen the way we do in neurological examination or else follow the light source like putting the torch in front of his eyes ask him to follow the light does he follow it or is it constant does he have a fixed gaze or does he avoid making eye contact with you many a time in malingering the patients may not want to have eye contact they look in the opposite direction is there a blinking of the eyes or else flickering of the eyelids seen very often or else it is a constant gaze for longer duration that should be noted is there what is his response to start a sudden movements of his hands towards the patient eyes as if in this situation what you have to do is the examiner has to move his hand towards the patient eyes does the patient close his lids or not so that's basically what is his response response for of his pupil whenever there is a painful sensory stimuli is given or else you can also check for corneal reflexes and see one another important thing is look at his eyes whether the patient is constantly scanning the environment especially in schizophrenia when a patient has paranoid suspicion or paranoid delusion they will be constantly looking here and there for the persecuted persecutory person or else the person they will be constantly looking for is there any person who is trying to harm them so those kind of whether there is any scanning moments are there please look into that let's move into the fourth point reaction to what is said and done in this situation what is the response to his simple commands ask him to show his tongue ask him to lift his hand ask him to name his name certain simple objects give simple commands how he will a kumbh is there so simple commands whether he follows doesn't follow ask him to walk for a distance and come back is there any presence of either active or passive and cooperativeness to be noted check for presence of automatic obedience this can be tested by telling him i am going to prick his tongue by a pin and ask him to stick his tongue out if he does it and you say if you are pain if it, it may hurt him most of the time the patient may not do it in a patient with keratonia they will automatic obedience is seen and they will stick their tongue out of their mouth so that is automatic obedience many a time they also have echolalia and echopraxia this is basically the patient mimics the examiner if they are mimicking the examiner's action that is echopraxia if they mimic the patient words and sentences that is if they are mimicking the speech they are called as echolalia so these are all what we call it as echo phenomena these are commonly seen in catatonia patient are the movements of the limbs being slow fast or interrupted it is fast in many a patients slow in catatonia and depressed patients sometimes interrupted especially various if you are going to see even in catatonia sometimes it is seen and in eps you can see very slow movements moving to the fifth point muscular reaction so when you are checking for a muscular reaction check for tone of the muscles usually the tone of muscles are seen in the upper limbs look for rigidity lead pipe rigidity or else cogwheel rigidity usually appreciated in the wrist check for waxy flexibility as if you are bending whether you feel that there is a bending of the wax candle gegenhalten mitgehen and mitmachen these phenomena i will describe in a new video at present we will just mention this test for his head and neck flexibility and is there any spasm move his neck forward and backward sidewards tilt on either side does distraction or command influence changes the responses of these all these movements the way we distract the patient especially when we do reflexes in neurological examination similar attempt should be done here whether note whether the patient has drooling of saliva which is commonly seen in extra pyramidal symptoms because of medication holding of saliva is common closing of mouth and protrusion of lip like snout spasm this is a common phenomena which we see in our adolescent whenever they are taking selfie they pout their lips the same thing is called as snout spasm especially we are going to see in catatonia patient 
Look for is there any urinary and fecal incontinence and any abnormal movements if it is noted here like tardive dyskinesia, akathisia or else EPS should be mentioned here. Moving to the sixth important point, what is his emotional responses, responsiveness? Look for his emotional responses when you are talking to the patient and the family members. When you mention about the death of a family member or his death of his parents or loved ones, what is his reaction? Does he have a sad reaction? Does he eyes fills with tears? If you talk about any good event or a happiness event, whether the patient patient's face brighten up or not, whether there is emotional reactivity is there or to be seen. At the same at the same time, suddenly you clap your hands and see whether the patient gets startled or not. So this is the, these are the common responsiveness we have to check and also making a joke either by the examiner or by the family member does it el elicit any kinds of happiness or a smile on his face that should be noted moving to the seventh speech is there any spontaneous speech does he talk to the examiner or else he refuses to talk to the examiner but in the absence of the examiner usually the patients many times they talk to their family members if it is there please do document whether they talk in monosyllabus, whether they complete the speech, please do document that. If the patient is mute, whether it is consistently present in the whole day or in a morning it is there, in the evening it is not there, please do make is there a, please do make note of it. Is there any efforts to speak or make sounds or whisper? Does the patient do all these attempts or not? Please do document that. Moving to the last part, writing. If the patient doesn't speak, please give a pen and paper. Ask him to write his name, address. And many a time, many patients may not speak, but they start writing. If they start, do it. Please do continue the interview by writing. These are the points which have been there in the Kirby's Performa. But however, there are some additional points which we can do now. The additional points which we have to do is, very important is vital signs. Check for his pulse, BP, temperature, respiratory, respiratory rate and also regularly monitor these vital signs. At the same time, look for input and output chart, basically food intake and also the fluid intake. If the patient is catatonia, unresponsiveness, please monitor them and also look for medications. If you are suspecting any kind of side effects, please do stop the offending agent immediately. Example, lithium toxicity or else if a patient has taken a lot of medications for an attempted suicide, in such a scenario, please do monitor the vital signs. In that scenario also, the patient may come in a stupor state. So please do stop the offending drugs. If you don't find that there is any drug toxicity or attempted suicide, please required medication can be started, especially catatonia if it is functional. If you want to start a lorazepam and the patient doesn't take by orally, please do consider IM or sometimes IV. But however, the all attempts should be made to give the medications orally. If it is not possible, the patient is actively resisting, does not want to take medication, you can consider IM or IV. But however, please do remember, if the patient is very uncooperative, is trying to escape, and patient is very disturbed, that time you may have to consider restraining him. If you want to restrain a patient, you have to follow Mental Health Care Act of 2017, Section 97. From subsection 2 to 9, there are certain important points have been given. You need to follow that. If you don't follow that, you are violating the rights of the persons with mental illness. And if you are using restraint, it should be used only to prevent harm to himself or to others. And it has to be authorized by a psychiatrist only. And you have to record the time of start of the restraint and when you are going to close it or else you have to monitor and as early as possible you have to stop the restraint. And you have to have a justification for doing the physical restraint. And you have to monitor it, document it as per the regulations. The regulations was notified on 18th of December 2020. You have to follow that. They the clear a tabular form has been given which form has to be filled every time when you restrain a patient 
at the same time within 24 hours you have to inform the family members or the nominated representative regarding the restraint and also every month you have to send the number of patients who have been restrained what was the method approached why it was done and when it was started when it was closed which nr was informed all those information has to go to the mental health review board monthly so to coming to the last part to conclude my dear friends examination of an uncooperative patient is very essential and you need to follow and observe this patient because these uncooperative patients may have a serious mental illness they may harm themselves or harm our mothers hence you have to take certain risk and also if you are doing anything against their wish and will please do capacity assessment as per mental health care act of section 4 and under section 81 there has been clearly a guidance document has been released by the ministry of health and family welfare if you want to learn about the capacity assessment i have made a video which will be available which is available on my youtube please do look into it and for uncooperative patient you have to follow these eight important kirby's pro forma components along with vital and restrain following you have to for restrain methodology need to follow thanks for giving your valuable time if you like my video please do subscribe to my channel thank you stay safe